Hey, hello you fleshy blood packets, and welcome to my first impressions of Vampire's Melody. That's the fourth time I've tried to get the intro done, and that's the one I'm keeping. So this is a visual novel game about a vampire? Multiple vampires? Am I the vampire? I don't know, but hey, I was curious. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a play and try. Please start a new game. So polite. Music super relaxing, by the way. Oh, achievement already, get in. Rambo, first blood, love it. Patter, patter. Damn, Norley, and stop! Well, actually, uh, someone tells me the rain itself is a little bit loud. So let's turn that down a little. Just a touch. I'm assuming it's sound effect. Yes, definitely. Okay. You get to be part of the process with me. Stop Norlian! Behind me, at least five Yarlians are yelling those words at the top of their voices. They are referring to me as the damn Norlian, and my nerves are on edge from the way they roar like hunters chasing a prey. A prey? Stop! I don't dare to look back, and can only flee like a hunted animal running for its life, along with the cold raindrops hitting me relentlessly. Crack. I do like that the uh, the thunder's got its own subtitle. Thunder booms in the distance. The flash of lightning splits the grey sky into two halves, and the raindrops gradually resemble a glass wall. Whoosh! Although the Yarlian's muskets are ineffective under the heavy rain, their crossbows are still deadly. Crossbow bolts whiz past me under the heavy rain along with their cries. Stop, or else you're dead! In fact, they don't need to threaten me. I can't run much further. Every joint and tendon in my body hurts so much, and my wet clothes are sticking to me like a form of binding, making it difficult to move. Ah! Suddenly, I realise my foot has slipped, and I fall down hard on the muddy ground. Let it end this way. I give up. I'm too tired. I just want to close my eyes and wake up after a good sleep. As the rain pitter-patters around me, and the footsteps come closer from behind, those sounds probably signal the end of my life. Suddenly, a few strikes of lightning flash across the night sky. Although my eyes are closed, I can still see those flashes of light through my thin eyelids. Closely followed by thunder screaming from above. Unusual cries of anguish reach my ears amid the lightning and thunder. Ah! Ah! Monster! Ah! Monster! Ah! <laughs> What's going on? Don't tell me it's a wild beast. Upon realising this possibility, a wave of fear sweeps across and I can't help shivering. Is a wild beast or a Yarlian frightening? At least a Yarlian speaks the same language and shares the same religious beliefs as me. We may be at odds over a gold mine now, but at least I'll still die with dignity if I fall into their hands. Oh, that was more of a question, but that's fine. However, it is not up to me to decide whether I live or die at this point. The only thing I can do is lie on the mud and wait for my death. But I wonder what happened to Mr. Cook. Did he escape? I'm guessing he's a chef. At first we'd thought that everything would go well when we opened our own restaurant after arriving in the new continent. Ah, this blasted war. The lightning persists and rainwater keeps flowing across the ground. In addition, what happened to the Yarlians? The Yarlians who were in hot pursuit earlier sounded as if they got devoured within a short time and stopped utterly anything. Stop uttering anything, ignore me. No matter how hard I strain my ears, I can only detect the sound of rain and lightning around me. Oh no. I quickly opened my eyes and struggled to get up from the mud. Don't want to get ripped apart by a wild beast. I have to hurry up and run while it's making a meal out of those Yarlians. I decided to run away from the direction where those Yarlian's cries came from, but a sharp pain ensues across my left leg after barely taking a few steps. Maybe I injured myself when I fell down? I had no choice but to hobble along slowly. Swishing sounds occasionally come from the surrounding area, and I can't tell if they are the sounds of raindrops hitting leaves, or a wild beast's fur brushing against the foliage. Crack! Another lightning flash it. Another lightning flashes across the rainy night sky, closely followed by a loud thunderclap. 
and the ground feels as if it is shaking. Everything suddenly turns white and my ears are ringing. I can't hear anything for a while. Gradually my vision recovers and I can see lights from a fire nearby. Probably started from that lightning just now. Under such terrible conditions at night, light from a fire signifies hope. Uh, let's go to the fire, why not? I like fire. My instincts urge me to approach the fire. It is a small patch of foliage that got ignited by lightning. Despite the heavy rain, the small fire is burning steadily and can stay alight for at least half an hour. As long as I stay near the fire, any frightening beast hiding in the darkness won't come over. I comfort myself in my heart. At least I can also recover some of my stamina now that my body feels stiff. As I'm about to get closer to the fire, my left leg refuses to obey me. I extend my hand hastily to lean against the tree for support, but I touch thin air instead, surprisingly. My goodness! <laughs> I've lost count of the number of times I fell down, but the ground feels... Oh no. It's actually dry. Yep. Knew that was going to happen. This... I get up with my eyes wide open. From the illumination provided by the fire outside, I realise I have fallen into a hole on a tree. And I'm not the only one here. A girl is lying quietly inside. Wait, this is inside the tree? Fair enough. Hey, are you alright? Although my unpleasant brush with death tonight should have left me feeling numb towards anything that happened by chance, the scene inside this opening is still quite a surprise for me. Hello? The girl is curled up with her back facing the tree's opening. She has attractive long silvery hair that barely covers her pure white cheeks, and her skin looks so delicate it might crumble if the wind blows across. Hello? I raise my voice again, but the girl still isn't responding. She's wearing a black dress with white frills and a red blood, a blood red sash around the waist. It's style and craftsmanship deserves praise. I just love the fact she's taking time to just go, Do you know what, I'm gonna accurately describe everything I can see in my head even though I'm looking at it. This girl certainly doesn't come from an ordinary family. Wake up, hey. Wait, that's, that's a bit presumptuous. She could just have that kind of fashion sense. I try to shake her, but her eyes remain closed as if she were a soulless mannequin. I also love that she's a vampire. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm assuming she's a vampire. Yeah, she's got crosses and a little bat hair accessory. <laughs> because, you know, why would you want to be inconspicuous? No. Ah, it hurts. Not only did I fail to wake her up, but also aggravated the injury on my left leg that it hurts so much, and I end up sitting on the floor after falling down. Uh, I'm gonna guess there's some blood from my leg that's gonna spurt out and go like on her mouth and then she licks the blood and then eats me. Now I notice my... <laughs> the next sentence! Oh, I love it. Now I notice my left leg has an open wound or a wound after it got stabbed by a tree branch earlier and it is still bleeding. Forget it, I'm fighting for my life. I sigh and take off my backpack to use as a temporary bandage for my wound. Mr. Cook gave me this backpack. Gave this backpack to me as a present not too long ago. Before we came to this mountain, we'd even agreed to fill our backpacks with fresh produce before going back. Looks like this is only a dream. Never mind. As long as one can survive, there is always a way. I shake my head to clear those unhappy thoughts, steal myself to cut the backpack with a bill hook, and turn the pack into a few strips of cloth. If I can live. Ah. I don't know why he said it like that. I enjoy the acute pain to fasten the strips of cloth securely across the wound on my left leg. Phew. I breathe a sigh of relief after bandaging my wound and glance at the girl who is still in the deep sleep. She doesn't seem to have any visible wounds or signs of injury, but how come she's sleeping here and won't wake up? I crawl across carefully and place my finger across her, her nose, because that's a natural reaction. Oh. My hand is still numb after it got drenched by the rain earlier, and the girl's breathing feels quite shallow. I can't tell whether she's alive. Missy, these are exceptional circumstances. There's no other way. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry, what are you going to do? I decide to press my ear against her chest to see if I can hear any heartbeats, even though it is somewhat improper. Huh? As I lean my head... As I lean my head across, a painful stinging sensation suddenly occurs at my neck. 
and this feeling quickly spreads to the rest of my body. Done got bit. Hey, at least blood didn't just pour out of my leg and go in her mouth. So, you know, I wasn't completely right. <laughs> it's so cold. And so tiring. I wonder how much longer do I need to run before I can elude them? Where are you, Mr. Cook? Rumble. What's that sound? How come there is such a frightening sound? What kind of monster is after me? Rumble. The sound is getting louder. It's approaching. It's getting closer. What sort of frightening monster is that? I have to run. But my legs won't move. Hurry up and move. Ah. I wake up while thrashing about. So it's just a dream? I don't see any monster in front of me, but that girl is still there, sound asleep. Right, it's her. I rub my head and remember I had eluded the Yarlians after being pursued by them last night, and then came here when lightning started to go fire, and fell into an opening on a tree by accident. And then... But I seem to have no recollection of what happened after that, as if any memories of that part got erased. How convenient! Why did I sleep overnight here? Ah yes, I got injured. Maybe I passed out from blood loss? I instinctively feel around my left leg. The bandages are gone, but my legs don't have any signs of injury at all. Strange. I remember it's my left leg. I feel around my right leg at the same time, and that leg has no signs of injury either. Rumble. That frightening noise in my dream suddenly reaches my ears again while I'm racking my brains over it. Oh no. Don't tell me that monster isn't from my dreams. Wake up, quick. That terrifying noise sounds really close, and I might not have enough time to escape if I don't run at once. I hurriedly shake that girl while she's still fast asleep. Okay, we have voice acting. The girl is responding this time, surprisingly. She seems to be growling in annoyance after being woken up. Her voice is sweet and clear, yet she looks irritated, and she pushes my hands away. You've finally woken up. Get out quickly. There's a monster. We need to run. Huh? The girl rubs her eyes and I'm stunned by her purple demonic eyes for an instant. I wouldn't say demonic. It's so pretty. No, I said there's a monster. The girl's voice is getting shriller. I can also detect anger and hostility in her questioning. Uh, I'm Raylan. It wasn't intentional. I'm from Nor- uh, I ran here to escape from some trouble. Uh, we have no time to talk about all these, so listen up. I nearly told her I'm a Norlian, yet I'm also worried that she may be a Yali and they give me trouble. Monster, uh, what's going on? I'm quite certain I heard a rumbling- I heard rumbling noises a short while ago. <laughs> No, it's true. It was nearby just now. I swear I've never heard such frightening sounds before in my entire life. I didn't lie to you. It might even be lurking somewhere in one corner while looking at us for its next meal. Last night, it had several Yarlians for supper. Girls, sorry, the girls. The girl closes her eyes again. Looks like she doesn't care about Yarlians. I want to open my mouth, yet I can't find anything to say. Don't tell me I was too much on edge and started to hallucinate. Maybe I should follow her advice by resting quietly before making any plans to leave the mountain and look for Mr. Cook. So I find a spot in one corner and shut my eyes to recuperate. Likewise. Listen, listen, it's here. I jump up with my feet sliding against the floor. God, the sound is all over the place, by the way. The girl opens her eyes and furrows her brows. What's the point in sleeping? We should run, quickly. Settle, are you a fool? 
Upon hearing her words, I grab her hand and shake it for a while, feeling unsettled in my heart. Then tell me she's really an idiot. She looks so well dressed that she can't possibly be an ignoramus living in a tree. I mean, what a logical conclusion that is. The girl takes my hand to pull herself up before shriding out. I can only hear her voice from inside the tree. Wait. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> I hurry out of the tree after that cocky girl and can only see her standing there while looking around dumbfounded. This. I follow her gaze and gasp involuntarily as I break out in a cold sweat. A terrifying yellow dragon is roaring mightily, producing continuous rumbling noises. In addition, black smoke is spewing from its tail, and it can swiftly demolish any tree in its path with its head. Run! Hurry! My legs have turned to jelly at an overwhelming sight of this frightening monster, and I can barely muster my voice, but my head is telling me to run. I grip my teeth and tense my muscles. In one fell swoop, I grab that girl who doesn't know any better, turn around and run away from the scary monster. We need to run away as quickly as possible while it hasn't responded yet. It's our only hope to survive. <laughs> Turned into an owl. <laughs> oh, I have no idea how far we ran. Anyway, I stopped to catch my breath. Only when those rumbling noises from behind are completely out of earshot. Are you alright? I wipe away the sweat covering my entire face and turn round to check on that girl I pulled to run with me. <sighs> she looks confused while staring in the direction we came from. She's probably wondering whether that monster will pursue us. Nani? Uh, that was the monster I've been talking about. I have no idea what it is either. A human creation? Are you joking? Humans can't create such a massive thing. Well, I mean, buildings exist, which are clearly bigger than that, but you know, that's fine. She lowers her head to think about something, then I realise I'm still holding her hand. Sorry, your stamina is really amazing. I hurriedly release her hand, but I notice she didn't sweat at all. No breathing is unbelievably steady. You should be panting heavily after running like this. She ignores me and begins to mutter to herself, as if she's trying to recall something. Guess not every aristocratic girl is weak and prone to illnesses. My worries are unfounded. Well, I'm going back. What about you? I point in a direction that I remember as my way back. She glances in my direction, and then looks behind her as if she can't make up her mind. Although we have escaped from that monster, it may come here, and we don't know if there are others in this mountain forest, so it's best for you to return to town with me for now, alright? I'm not certain if this girl is from our small town, but I still bring it up after a moment's hesitation. After all, it's probably too dangerous to leave her alone in this mountain. Mochi? Hurry and go, missy. I pat her shoulder to encourage her to pick up the pace. <laughs> she angrily brushes away my hand and walks off on her own. Should be along this direction. I hurriedly point in the direction behind me. She frowns and returns to me grudgingly. Sorry, it's a habit of mine. I would usually talk like this at the kitchen where I work. Yes, yes. She is urging me to hurry up and go after dismissing mine. Actually, I only have a rough idea of the direction because this expanse of forest is far larger than I thought. A nighttime thunderstorm could change so many things. I'm relying on my memory to find my way back, and the girl is following me quietly from behind. However, the sur the scenario, the surroundings are getting more unfamiliar. Sorry about that, my brain just decided to take over and put in a new word. Do you remember what happened last night? 
I slow down a little to allow her to catch up. She intently casts her deep purple eyes straight at me as if she's checking on something. Uh, Sen? I'm a bit confused. What did I do last night? Just looks away and bites her lip while muttering to herself without answering my question. Uh, I'll be honest. Actually, I still remember the earlier part clearly. A few Yarlians were after me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, chill out, text. A few Yarlians were after me. I ran for my life. Then those Yarlians suddenly stopped shouting for some strange reason. At that time, it was pitch black and I didn't dare to look back. Afterwards, I stumbled across an opening on a tree when the place got <laughs> lit by lightning. I fell inside by accident and found you there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I knocked the back of my head, trying my best to remember the earlier events. I saw you were inside the opening, and then... <laughs> the girl suddenly stops in her tracks and calls out an alarm, snapping me out of my thoughts. She looks completely surprised, much more than that time when she saw the huge yellow dragon. I also turned quickly to look in that direction. This. We walk to the edge of the forest without realising it, but the sight in front of us looks alien to me. Where are we? I look at her. From her serious expression, I can tell she's equally puzzled. My memory didn't fail me. This place should be a small rundown town. A small town where one could see the edge in one glance. I can feel my breath getting more rapid. Everything is so confusing. But in front, how did this large city, which resembles a labyrinth, appear in one night? What should we do? The girl looks away from me to stare in the distance and begins to say something strange. What? The year 1972? What are you saying? She points to a tall building opposite. It resembles a tower stretching to the heavens that I can never imagine. A large poster is hanging at the middle of the tall building. The poster has a picture of a man with a pipe and a burning flag behind it. That is the flag of Yali? No. At first glance it looks like the Yalian's flag, but in fact it appears closer to the flag of Yali and Norli combined together. Nevertheless, I'm more interested in the words on top. 1972 general election. The year 1972? Rubbish. Stuff and nonsense. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, yeah, we all say that. I can't help slapping my face, hoping to wake up from this ludicrous dream. Wake up quick, Raylan, wake up quick! My cheeks feel as if they are burning after being slapped repeatedly, and the palm of my hands are even starting to feel numb, but everything remains the same. How did it become like this? What is going on? I lower my hands limply, unable to stop myself from trembling all over. Twenty-sixth of June, sixteen seventy-two. I filled with new hope when she mentioned that year, which I know well. By the way, you also remember it was 26th of June, 1672, yesterday. Ten years? What do you mean ten years? I quickly grab her and press on with my questions as if she were my lifeline. What do you know? Quickly, tell me what is going on. He lowers her head. The girl suddenly glares at me after some time. Me? I pointed myself to confirm I didn't hear her wrongly. Plans changed. What are you talking about? Tell you what, they're pretty fortunate then if they stayed in that tree for 300 years and nothing happened to it. She shakes me off and turns around to leave. Wait. I quickly grab her. 
I don't know your plans, nor do I want to, and I don't care if you want to go anywhere either. I just want to go back, so help me to return first. It's obvious. I'm sure I ended up here because of you. You definitely know how to return too, right? When I said return, I mean I want to go back to the year 1672, not 1972. I don't want to argue with you. Let me go back, and I'll pretend I never saw you. What do you mean? You can't do it. What do you mean? I can't return? I freeze as if... I freeze as if a bucket of ice is being poured onto me. I wanted to read that, like, I freeze as if I'm a bucket of ice for some reason. Then, what about Mr. Cook and Miss Erin next door? <laughs> she cackles as if she's gloating at me. I bow my head. If this is the year 1972, then they should be long gone by now. Her voice gradually becomes more distant and eventually fades in the wind. She's gone. What should I do? Should I go after her? But I have no idea where she went. Where? Should I go? Where can I go if Mr. Cook is gone? I wander aimlessly through the streets in this foreign city. I mean, it's looking very advanced for 1972. The roads in this place are painted black in colour and have wide pavements. They can move so quickly without harnessing the power from a horse or ox. In addition, there are skyscrapers that how do you know what a skyscraper is? But whatever. There are skyscrapers that stretch taller than massive trees reaching up to the sky. These buildings have a variety of attractive posters and signboards displayed at their entrances and the pictures are so beautiful it's hard to tell them apart from the real thing. I begin to develop strong hallucinations by looking at the various things around me. I seem to be a non-existential spirit drifting about in the city. However, every passerby is looking at me strangely. Their bewilderment proves I'm not a ghost. I even thought of searching for the places I could remember at first, but I couldn't find any familiar building or signboard. From morning till night, I passed countless streets and many unfamiliar faces, yet I didn't get anything. Mr. Cook, where are you if you're still alive? Where are your traces if you aren't around anymore? Eventually, I reach an entrance with open metallic doors. The passageway beyond the entrance has soothing music and bright lights that feel like a place full of joy and laughter. But something on the other side catches my attention, and I stride there. Mr. Cook? I realise it at that moment. This is the place. A large statue of a person holding a shotgun is standing in front of me, and that person is Mr. Cook. The statue has a plaque at the base with the words written on it. Menlo Cook, 7 8 1631 21 Mr. Cook's restaurant used to be sited at the same place as this statue, although this locale looks entirely different now. My gut instinct is telling me that I used to live here. Menlo Cook, Norley civilian hero. He was the first person to spot a Yarlian scouting party and raise the alarm, enabling, enabling the Norlians to organise their defences in time. I read each word on the plaque verbatim. Although very few words are written on it, each word feels more sombre than anything else. Cook later joined the Norlian militia and died a glorious death in the most heated battle on March 1675. Both colonies merged after this long period of war and bloodshed in history. I open my mouth when I finish reading everything on the plank, yet I can't breathe. As I take a step back, the heel of my foot trips against a loose tile sticking out, and I fall on my buttocks. And a few people in outlandish clothing of various colours laugh boisterously at my wretched state before they promptly disappear amid the bright lights in the distance. I look at the lights and can make out the words amusement park on top. Amusement park? I feel hurt. Mr. Cook, his restaurant and my home were buried in this amusement park's grounds. 
I staggered to my feet. I have to escape from the cemetery and amusement park. I can't breathe. So he said that it's full of a place of laughter and joy, and yet he's offended by that. Interesting. I'd like to think that, I don't know, some place that I had lived, if it got just crumbled to the ground, would be a place where people enjoy themselves. I wander along the streets in bewilderment. Now I really have no idea on where to go. In this world, who am I? A set of loud noises suddenly ring out from behind. I turn around to see a red coloured metallic vehicle and the people inside are looking angrily at me from behind the car's window. Country Bumpkin, move aside quickly. Where are you going? Could I hit your ride? Country Bumpkin, are you mad? Now a few men have stepped out of the vehicle while cursing and swearing. These metallic, metallic boxes can contain that many people. Hello there, I have nowhere to go. May I come along with you all? That group of people surround me after I told them about my predicament. And their angry expressions are replaced by sinister smiles. Eh? What are you doing? A man suddenly pins me down from behind, and it seems both of my hands are being restrained before I can react. Nothing. We just want to befriend you. Don't get so agitated now. Lads, put it on him. A gunny sack which smells horrible is placed over my head and my vision turns black. This fellow is out of his mind and he looks so wretched. Who knows if he might be an escapee from the mental hospital? Would those punks at the target gang want him? We can tear him apart before selling him. They won't be able to tell. What is there to sell? I have nothing valuable on me. It's okay if you have no money. Your entire body is worth a lot. One kidney alone can fetch a few hundred thousand. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, being tied up from head to toe, no matter how hard I struggle, I can't move. I can only yell through my mouth. Damn, you're so noisy. Something hard is hitting me on the back of my head a few times and I'm getting dizzy. Someone is kicking my stomach. Who's calling me? I blearily open my eyes and see a silhouette in front. You are... I slowly regain my vision. Then I realise the dark figure under the moonlight is none other than that girl inside the tree. She's just looking at me from above and appears somewhat annoyed. John, what happened? Where am I? I have returned? I can only see a forest around me. All those roads and tall buildings are gone as if I have returned to the world I belong to. I didn't go back? So I haven't returned. I can feel a slight ache on the back of my head as I regain consciousness. And I suddenly remember that I got bound by several men before passing out. My head took a quite a beating. No, what happened to that group of people? I scramble to a sitting position and look around upon recalling this part. Dealt no, I only wanted to ask them for help. <laughs> the girl seems to be laughing for quite a while, but she sighs afterwards. But I had no other choice. My home and my family are long gone. Your scent? What are you saying this time? Deal? For all? I don't get what you mean at all. He pauses for a moment before smiling at me. Gator 
Yella? I slowly recite her name. This is a vampire's name? Girl is actually a vampiress? Well, no, I guess you'd still just be a vampire, right? She seems somewhat angry. Maybe she's surprised at my response. I'm laughing at the sheer incredulity of things. <laughs> oh my god, vampires for all that sleep for 300 years? Do you have anything more far fetched than this? Please, sorry. Uh, let's see, normal people probably wouldn't believe vampires' words. At this point, what's the difference whether I believe you or not? I mean, yeah, I would go with the second one. Doesn't matter if you believe because it's actually happening, so, you know, whatever. I have no place I can call my home in this world. Even if I believe her, it won't change anything. Wait, no. No, that's not what I chose to disbelieve. <laughs> no, I didn't choose that. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> I guess I should have gone with normal people wouldn't believe a vampire's words, which I thought would be meaning for her that I'm disagreeing, but okay, sure. What are you going to do? Yella comes close and taps me with her sharp index finger. I mean, good luck trying to look at your own neck. She steps on my neck lightly with her finger now. Mark? She jabs intently. My skin is about to break. Ow, it hurts. Don't tell me this girl is really a vampiress. Why is it so insistent on vampiress? Her hand is surprisingly large and doesn't match her appearance. What deal? I didn't agree to it. You must have forced it on me while I had passed out inside the tree. I just entered to take shelter from the rain, and you erased my memories? I couldn't remember anything inside the tree at all, let alone any recollection of whatever packed. You. Yellow withdraws her finger, and that cold feeling promptly leaves my neck. もちろん。私にもある人としてあんたを守る義務があるわ。少なくともあんな不良どもにおもちゃにさせたりはしない。You're saying it while licking her own fingertips. Protect. But you're a vampire. Don't tell me you won't suck my blood. I wonder if I'm imagining things. It feels as if she's trying to overcome something. I have no knowledge of this world after 300 years. Basically, can't help you with anything. You aren't interested in my blood either. In that case, you have absolutely nothing to lose if you annul this pact and allow me to leave, right? She's releasing me that easily? It seems a vampire's attitude to his or her servants is much more liberal than a landowner's. She closes her eyes and her lips curve upwards as if she's deriving pleasure from toying with her pets. You. A vampire isn't up to anything good after all. Fine, fine. How should I repay you then? Isogana, 
大した問題じゃないわ Perhaps you already took me into account a long time ago? なぜあんたのことは全くの想定外よでも悪いことばかりでもないみたい The wind from the mountainside is blowing her silver hair up, and she's smiling at me with her sharp fangs glinting under the moonlight. As her hair spreads out in all directions under the moonlight, she simply looks like a pure white angel. No, a vampire should be a monster. I can't allow myself to be deceived by this girl's appearance. <laughs> oh my god, this whole situation is because you let yourself be deceived by her appearance. I、oh, love it. <laughs> あんたの運命はすでに私と共にある。That monster whispers to me. それは呪われた運命であり、同時に祝福でもある。ね、ジョン。I was wondering earlier, where did this John come from? I'm Raylan, Raylan Monroe. Yella shrugs and smiles happily. <laughs> 冗談よ、レイラン。You must be doing it on purpose. <laughs> She's looking at me slyly and is smiling even more gleefully. 起きて着替えて。それから私についてきて。Yellow points to something beside me. Eh? Where did these set of clothes? What? さっきの不良たちから剥ぎ取ってやったの。Skip stuff. そんなボロボロの服で私についてきたらみんなに誤解されるでしょ You really got rid of them? Look at the pile of clothes and they really appear very similar to the ones those people were wearing earlier when they surrounded me. 当然よ。私を誰だと思ってるの She goes out after saying it. She's probably giving me some privacy to change my clothes. Fine. I choose a set of clothes that is close to my size from among the pile. Clothes in this era are so much softer than the ones during my time. After all, I have no choice but to follow you. Yellow's shoulders stiffen slightly in the distance as if she heard my muttering. Eh? Mutsira? And she turns around to chuckle. I haven't finished changing! I hurriedly pull my pants up. Mendo no shimobe ne! Hayak kigai no sayo! Yella quickly looks away. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Yella quickly looks away while blushing and she strides off in a huff. But her steps become more light hearted after she's walked a few paces. Doesn't seem to be angry. Rather, she's behaving as if she's jumping for joy after finding a treasure. <laughs> oh, something. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> to, be, to have the presence of mind of everything going on, to just uh, <laughs> to perceive all that. Oh, this writing's amazing. Coming. I quickly run after her. Since there's no going back and I have nowhere to go, I might as well follow her. Two heads are always better than one. Oh my god. I follow Yella to a remote area. An old solitary mansion is standing in front. Its architecture feels nostalgic to me because a rich person's house used to be designed in this way three centuries ago. But now the old mansion looks dilapidated at a glance and an even a little eerie under the moonlight. What is this place? But three centuries have passed. I peer at the roof of the building like a middle aged, balding man. Why? Why that specific? She steals a glance at me as she embraces herself smugly. Well, that's good. Key? Do we need a key? I survey the windows. Is a key needed? Isn't it easier to simply open a window and climb inside? Yes, yes, yes. 
This girl is just a vampire dressed as an aristocrat. How come she also has an entitled girl's attitude, and can even shun the simple task of opening a window? Coming. I'll search in the base of the stairs. I'll locate the key she indicated and use it to open the door. But the lock on the door is extremely rusty. What should I do? I have no choice but to return to her for help. Yara snatches the key from my hands, squeezes past me and works intently on the door. Creak creak. Squeak squeak. The metallic scraping noises become louder until there's a snapping sound. I think the key broke inside the lock. Oh, that was incredibly loud. Yella becomes berserk and I watch her in fear. Although she said she wouldn't suck my blood, she didn't say any She didn't say she would not bite me with her sharp teeth if she becomes angry. Please don't lose your rationality and chomp me. Calm down. How about this? I'll open the window, get inside and open the door from there. She lifts the hem of her dress and leaps inside a window, which is close to a person's height without waiting for my response. I'm utterly shocked by her neat movements. Really too fast, and she can get inside smoothly without brushing her dress against the broken glass. Then I hear a set of footsteps followed by the door being opened with a groan shortly afterwards. So we hurry inside. Ouch! <laughs> On stepping inside, I trip on a decaying floorboard and nearly fall down. Luckily, Yellow is quick and catches me in the nick of time. She glares at me and uses her feet to clear the litter on the floor. Too dark here, I'm not used to it. Wait for my eyes to adjust the lighting inside the mansion before I look around the interior with the moonlight streaming in from the windows. You've been in a pitch black forest and now your eyes need to get used to it okay fair enough whatever most of the floorboards inside are in disrepair and old wooden boards are scattered everywhere simply stepping on any of these boards might even risk getting pierced by wooden splinters i'm not blind i'm just not quite used to this place i should tell you that i used to be the champion in a rabbit hunting competition at norley the norleans would frequently organize hunting competitions one of their most challenging contests that involved tracking down rabbits and catching them within the shortest time. That was the best in this aspect. <laughs> Yellow's mocking laughter interrupts my bragging about myself. Don't you dare underestimate. Huh? What is that? I suddenly notice a hole that looks larger than the other cavities under the moonlight of the floor behind Yellow before I can rebut her. When she turns around to look in the direction I'm facing, her facial expression stiffens. Just the first floor, the hole is so big and doesn't seem to have rotted naturally by itself. It can't possibly be a tunnel dug up by some wild beast or other. <laughs> Yella goes there in a fluster, her face ashen. Vaults? I follow her. At the vault entrance, I can see a flight of wooden stairs that is badly damaged by termites and man-made reconstructed walls around us. From my current spot, the place really looks like a vault, but it is pitch dark and I can't see anything further inside. <laughs> Yellow stares incredulously at the interior as if she's going to use her gaze to dig out whatever is inside. What is going on? Why well, do you look so upset and fearful now? Don't tell me you hid something frightening inside, such as a vampire familiar or something. Yellow jabs a fingernail at my elbow, and it hurts so much I shrink back. <laughs> so it's treasure. What a fright. I can't see the interior, but it should be fine as long as it doesn't contain some strange beast skeletons inside. In that case, let's retrieve them, quickly. John, uh, wait. Yellow crumples like a puppet falling off its broken strings after saying it, and I quickly help her to rest at one side. The entire mansion is huge, but I can only see wooden planks, nails, and various junk scattered around. Not, only, not a single piece of furniture is in sight, and the stairs have deteriorated until one half broke off, making it impossible to go upstairs. Just like a hollowed out, just like a hollowed out hole in the tree. I. <laughs> I head outside to find some bark and dry grass in the forest and press them together to use as a makeshift bedding. I also obtain some wild fruits. 
Although they don't look exactly right, they are big and shouldn't pose any issues if we eat them to fill our stomachs. Want them? I bring the bark, dry grass and wild fruits back to Yella. She doesn't seem to have recovered from a massive shock in losing all of her valuables, and she just quietly pushes away the wild fruits I've offered to her. As I lie on the bark and dry grass, I recall Yella's cocky attitude earlier. I'm well prepared for all eventualities. Now that I have a floor like you, we shouldn't have any major problems. So the fault which became easy pickings for looters was the only thing she prepared for all eventualities. Can't help chuckling. Maybe our surroundings are too quiet and my laughter is a bit noticeable. Huh? I didn't. No, no. This girl is extremely proud of herself, surprisingly. Just like a lady from a rich family. I was just thinking, how should I say it? Once anyone experiences a lot of misfortune, an additional one isn't much in comparison. Since all these things we've encountered led us in such a mess that it couldn't get any worse, I felt relieved when I realised it, so I laughed. Some of that colour has returned to her face, and I'm close to laying out the makeshift bedding. Lie down, it'll be more comfortable. The wooden flooring is too hard. I still have another set of materials and we'll make another bedding shortly, don't worry. Yella hesitates for a while, but she takes off her shoes and sits on the makeshift bed I've arranged for her anyway. Yes, I never expected that either. I was still enjoying a piping hot bowl of vegetable soup that Mr. Cook prepared for me at home yesterday morning, and everything changed in the blink of an eye. I don't know how much treasure you have accumulated, but how did you amass them? You should know- so I knew that was going to happen- You should know that ordinary people like me would never even think of digging an underground vault, especially for storing valuables. What an achievement just to fill a box with silver. No, you just said- you said just now that you worked your blood, sweat and tears for them. How did it become a matter of obtaining them easily from the rich? Never mind, never mind. Actually, I'm beginning to get used to it. Just like that time when you said you were well prepared for all eventualities. Now! I mimic her voice and facial expression, but she pinches my arm savagely before I can finish. Ow! Yes, yes, yes. She keeps saying she's a vampire, but other than her massive strength and bad temper, the vampire girl isn't even as scary as those human hooligans who kidnapped me earlier. Now that you're feeling better, would you like to eat something? You haven't eaten anything for the whole day. I pick up all the fruits that appear cleaner than the rest, munch on one and off the other fruit to her. She shakes her head. Are you worried that we won't have enough to eat? Don't worry, I've plucked a lot, and there are plenty of those in the forest outside. We have enough for both of us. She's sparing a fault for me? I remember she climbed inside a window to open the door for me earlier. Huh? A waste? What do you mean? Vampire, don't tell me you can't eat normal food. I see. As a cook, I dread losing my sense of taste the most, but I can't help feeling a little sorry for this vampire girl. By the way, why didn't you allow me to open the window earlier? Well, you said I was your fraud or something. She lies down on the bedding with her back facing me after saying it. Why does her mood turn sour as quickly as a flipping page on a book? You're going to sleep? Good night. Add a few more fruits to fill my stomach, then I lie down on the bedding, curl up, and slowly drift off to sleep. I suddenly hear her mutter the word good night.
strange. How come I can't move? Hontoni Bakane? Kona Kantani Damasarinante. Kinka, you zut the Kreta Kizok to Unajine? Yeah, why can't I move? What are you going to do to me? Bakane? Unakaba Suita, a shakujio suit. Vampire Unaka was cutter at your number. Wait, I'm not worth drinking. And you said earlier that you wouldn't drink my blood. Help, help. He opens her bloodstained jaws wide and is coming at me. Ah! I sit up in fright and the tree bark on my face slides off. Yella is glaring angrily at me. For a moment, she looks perfectly similar to that vampire girl in my dream somehow. <laughs> oh, what would possess me to believe a vampire rests so easily and even travel with her to this house? I'm simply like a little princess who would follow others without being on her guard at all. I got abducted to this place after some weird girl called me. Although she said earlier that she wouldn't suck my blood, can a vampire girl really help keep her word? She looks more furious and her fangs are glinting. Wait, do you remember how many people's blood you have sucked? It's bread after all. I really had a premonition. Don't come over, don't suck my blood. Yella pauses for a moment, then she sighs and sits down again. But what if you're starving? It works that way? Which type am I to you? I see. Being considered a weakling, I can only sniff quietly in disappointment. Should I cry or laugh? On further thought, she would have acted much earlier if she really wanted to suck my blood. She had plenty of opportunities to do so and wouldn't need to wait until now. Suddenly, some noises which sound meta like metallic sheets hitting against something are coming from outside the mansion. I look out of the window to see a few men that step out of a car and they are bantering among themselves while walking towards the mansion. A few people are approaching. <laughs> What kind of people are they to you? You want to suck them? <laughs> Ow, it hurts. Surprisingly, she pinches me hard again. That group of people seem to have heard my voice and they stop to look at me. Are you a vagabond? One of them comes over a, to a window to ask me. Ah? For a moment, I have no idea how to answer him. He opens his mouth immediately without waiting for my answer. This building isn't owned by anyone and will be demolished as planned. For your own safety, please leave immediately. No, this building's owner is right here. I point to Yella beside me. You say she's the owner of this building? The man laughs as if he heard a joke. Otherwise... I glance at Yella to confirm on things. However, I didn't expect her to give up so easily after all. Huh? You're not the owner? Yella scowls at me before she steps out of this place. Wait for me. I run after her. I'm going to end it there, I think. It's, uh, oh, this is a weird one. Um, basically nothing's happened. Like, this has gone on way too long for such small progression. I know it's a visual novel but uh, definitely could have picked up the pace of it. Uh, 
yellow the edge vampire. I mean, she seems okay. She does seem very stereotypical of like a Cinderella character, but you know, maybe there'll be more that happens uh, later on. I can't see too much changing, to be honest. It's because it does feel very stereotypical. Um, the actual art style is not too bad overall. I mean, it's pleasant enough. It's not offensive in any way. It's not shockingly bad. Too much jiggle physics <laughs> based on just some of it that I've seen is, uh, yeah, just way too much. Also, Raylan, I just absolutely hate. I can't stand him. Just whines too much. He's just incompetent. But, you know, everybody loves that kind of character, right? Someone who just completely complains and is pretty much useless and is, you know, just <laughs> in constant need of protection. But, yeah, that's about it. It's, uh, it is, it's a visual novel, I guess. It's just a lot of reading, and yeah, I don't like that as an excuse for visual novel type games that, well, it's a visual novel, so expect a lot of reading. Uh, no, it's a game at the end of the day, so there should be things going on. It shouldn't just be reading a book, and then, what, I've had to click maybe two dialogue options this whole time. I don't know how long I've been recording, probably 45 to, minutes to an hour. At least it feels like it's that long. So... That is just a, a terrible excuse. It shouldn't be that long to actually make any impact on it. And one of those options, it was flawed anyway, because it was either uh, sounding like I disagree, which apparently meant I agreed with it, or in my response, which was just getting used to the scenario, just accepting what had happened. So for me, it didn't matter whether I believed it or not, because it actually happened. But that the game took it as me disagreeing. So yeah, it's just one of those. It's it's way too much reading and it's not doing anything with it. It's just pointing out things which you can see. That's all it's doing. It's not furthering the plot. It's not adding any depth to anything. It's just basically you see whatever this background is and then it spends ages just basically describing it. Nothing is really happening, which is kind of frustrating. Yes, it's a visual novel. There's going to be reading. There's going to be lots of dialogue, but make your dialogue mean something. Don't just fill the screen with loads of text to pad out the game, make it last longer than what it should actually be, tell me a story, and actually develop that story. Don't just ramble on for ages. Also, you don't need to add sound effects for subtitles when the sound effects are going off. There's no point to that, it just adds needless time. So yeah, that is Vampire's Melody. Hmm, don't know, I can't see it really me in just after all of that. I've got too many issues with it already and uh, I'm sure those will continue to be a problem the more I play the game. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Video, sorry for my hiccups. Don't know where they've come from. Maybe I've been bitten by a hiccuping vampire. Bye everybody. <laughs>